Gotta be honest, it's been a while since I've played this game, so I don't remember where I left off. And I'm also uploading on my main channel now, so that's fun. I'm hoping that whoever is watching on my main channel right now is not very confused by some of the previous stuff I've been uploading right now, because I've been basically talking about two different channels for like two months now, or a month? I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys are enjoying so far. Moving on. Travel safely. Thank you. Greetings, traveler. Thank you. They say Andraste sent you to save the world. If it'll help save lives and bring peace, I'll be the first to believe. I'm trying. I hope I don't disappoint. I hope so, too. Are you working for the Mage Rebellion? Mages are children of the Maker, no less than the rest of us. They struggle no less with questions of faith. Does that mean you support their freedom? Given a choice between the Circle and death, most mages willingly gave up some small freedoms for safety. But the pendulum swings, and now it seems any restraint is too much. I think they should have a chance to prove they deserve freedom. I will leave you to your duties. Make a speed you, my child. I am Sister Tanner. May I help you? I found the letter you sent a Templar named Corin. What? Shit. You can't prove anything. A letter from a rogue Templar. Nobody is going to care. So, what do you intend to do? What kind of cut are they giving you? Have you got protection? I see a suspicious lack of guards. It looks to me like you've been cut loose. Maybe you should look for a new employer. Are you serious? The high and mighty Inquisition needs smugglers? All right, I'm in. Seems like the Inquisition is the safer bet these days. I look forward to helping the Inquisition, as per our agreement. Greetings, Traveller. The merchants coming in now say there are countless bodies lying butchered on the side of the road. Not the Inquisition, even worse. Please, are you with the Inquisition? As you've wandered, have you by any chance seen a ram that is, um, different? Lord Wolseley wandered off, and he's very special. If you could find him, I'd be most grateful. What makes your ram so special? Well, he's always brought the family luck, and his advice helped us make our fortune. Your ram offered advice? He's a very special ram. Your ram has gone missing? Yes. I'm certain that if he heard his Jimmy missed him, he'd come right back. He's likely at our family's old summer cabin. It's by the lake in the southern hills. If you do find him and send him back, 
I'd be happy to pay you. I'll speak with you later. If you find my ram, please send him home. Hero in every port, Ballad of Nuggins. Oh, the best of us ran when the dreadnought was sighted. Nuggins, Nuggins, for he heard the call, tripped nine canari, and that's why he's knighted. Nuggins, Nuggins, as brave as he's small. Oh, a shore full of pirates, the worst set to happen. Nuggins, Nuggins, his heart pure and true, tripped him an admiral, now he's our captain. Nuggins, Nuggins, for me and for you. Oh, the blight was upon us, and we found no pardon. Nuggins, Nuggins, now he'll make a stand. Tripped up the darkspawn, and now he's a warden. Nuggins, Nuggins, for all in the land. Oh, paraded through Kirkwall as a hero and winner. Nuggins, Nuggins, stubborn and vicious. Tripped up a Viscount, now he's for dinner. Nuggins, Nuggins, of course he's delicious. <laughs> oh god. From Small Legends of Nugs and Foxes, collected by Philium Abard. <laughs> God, that was great. Do you know what it was? Yes, sir. What do you need? Good day. Too many people dying for want of simple herbs. My apologies. Can I help you? Are you running short of healing herbs? Yes. We've many injured from attacks by those cursed Templars. I need the herbs to treat people's wounds. It's too dangerous to go hunting through the hills to gather more. I've a list there of the herbs I need. There are refugees at the crossroads who would benefit from a healer. Of course they would. These attacks by the Templars have endangered countless innocent lives. But if I go to the crossroads to help, I might end up in danger myself. I doubt those refugees would risk their lives for a knife here. Why should I risk mine for them? Save yourself and all the villagers will remember is that you hid, even though they did the same. If you help the refugees, they may not love you, but they will hold their tongues before calling you knife here. All right. If the Inquisition soldiers are there, I might be safer, regardless. I'll see you at the crossroads soon. Just give me a moment to gather my things. May I help you? I found some of the herbs you were looking for. With this, I'm certain I can save more lives. Are you running short of healing herbs? Yes, I need them to keep wounds from going bad. It's too dangerous to go hunting through the hills to gather more. I've a list there of the herbs I need. Goodbye. Thank you so much for your help. A pleasure to see you again. I found some of the herbs you were looking for. This is exactly what I needed. Goodbye. Thank you so much for your help. A pleasure to see you again. I found some of the herbs you were looking for. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much for your help. A pleasure to see you again. Goodbye. Thank you so much for your help. Mother, I had the dream again last night. 
No, there'll be no talk of this. Are you sure? sure? Real. Of course. When I woke up. Have you seen... Lord Wolseley, I presume? A young man named Jimmy would very much like you to return home. Ah, good. So, fun fact, if you kill Lord Wolsey, he's actually a demon. I don't like to kill him just because he's so cute as a goat or a ram, but uh, technically, he's a demon, so <laughs> interesting. The mage conflict has been hard on the people here. Text on Senna's shrine. Senna beloved, may your ashes be gathered by Falon Din and carried safely after all the long years you carried me. I'm just trying to finish up as many quests as I can in the hinterlands. We are leaving today, I promise. This video, we will be out of the hinterlands. I'm just trying to take my time, make sure I get them all done. I do not suppose you found my Senna's shrine. I know it is a long way to go. I cleaned Senna's shrine and placed the flowers. May her ashes be gathered by Falundine and carried safely. After all the long years she carried me, thank you. You do a foolish old man too much kindness. 
Thank you, friend. May your Inquisition do as much good for the land as you have done for me. Greetings, Traveller. Greetings, Traveller. Is there anything we can do? Just ask. Thank A discerning customer. You'll have my best prices, of course. Greetings, Traveller. Good day. True enough. Lord Wolseley came back! He says you convinced him. Here, for all your trouble. Feels good to be back at work, Inquisition. And lucky you have me. In lesser hands, you'd be in trouble. Haven can't support the mounts you need, but I can. How are your charges? Well supplied? Haven is groaning under the weight. It wasn't built for this, but we'll make it serve. Heard anything worth noting? Too busy to hear things, and that's how I like it. Farewell. Make her be with you. That'll do fine. That'll do fine. Slaves to the highest kings, those who bring harm without provocation. I will take the these injury reports to research him in there. Hated and accursed. And Mother Giselle will treat all demon claw wounds as you suggest to deal with the venom. Toxin, not venom. It's only venom if it's deliberately injected into the bloodstream. This is simply an infection. Are you writing this down? I have a very good memory. Write it down, please. Greetings. What do the people make of us? Despite our fame, we're low on steadfast allies. We must aim for more. Any visiting dignitaries I should watch out for? Sir Griffith of Denerim, a most distinguished knight of the realm. He's defeated darkspawn, slain demons, chased down abominations. Just don't ask him about it over dinner. He spares no detail. I want to make sure that I get deft hands fine tools, so I need to unlock four of the things in this category. And then I also like, like when we get Skyhold, I like to get the vault, even though it's not really necessary. It doesn't do anything. I think it just looks cool.
Let us begin. Let's see what we have. It seems Blackwall knows nothing about the disappearance of the Grey Wardens. It's a disappointment. I am, however, glad that he is with us, even if he was not what I expected. He seems to be a good man, and his experience will be an asset to the Inquisition. <sighs> As for the other Wardens, I suppose we will have to keep looking. Anything I should know? I have nothing to report at the moment. Let's talk about you. Me? Bards tell tales. I bet you tell some good ones. There are plenty of tales in the library. Perhaps you should look for them there. I should leave you to your work. We can always talk later. Here, sir. With Segrit's compliments, sir. What's the catch this time? No catch, sir. Said he wanted to help the Inquisition. Plus, I think the herbs were going to go off and nobody wanted to buy them. What can I do for you? I'd like to know more about you, Solus. All right. What can I tell you? You said you'd traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the Fade. Dream in ancient ruins, and you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers, the best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, I see heroic wardens lighting the fire, and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real? It is the Fade. They are all real. We'll talk later. Goodbye. All men are the work of our maker's hands. The Singing Maiden. Have you ever heard the story of King Bedwer? Bedwer, like most kings, was a man of great pride, who expected nothing but complete loyalty from his subjects. He believed the best way to achieve this was through fear. After all, those who feared him would never cross him or question his rule. Most importantly, those who feared him would always seek to please him. Bedwer cultivated terror in his subordinates through the gleeful and unrestrained use of a contraption referred to as the Maiden. The Maiden was a hinged iron casket, as high and wide and as deep as a man, with vicious spikes within meant to pierce through the poor soul locked into it. 
Bedward's maiden was a prized possession and stood in place of honor in his throne room, often with a screaming victim inside it. Political rivals, suspected assassins, treasonous ministers, the maiden consumed them all, but as time passed, more people were given the maiden for increasingly trivial offenses. The cook for oversalting the king's food, the page boy for dropping his sword, the maiden cast a pall over the kingdom, and its people prayed for deliverance from their cruel king. Then one day, a strange woman rode into the city. She called herself Ember and was an emissary from a far-off land. Her leaders had heard, she said, of Bedwyr's wisdom and authority, and she sought the king's counsel. The thought that he had earned adulation of brother kings across the sea made Bedwyr swell with pride, and he granted Ember an audience. They dined and danced, and through it all, Ember flattered and fawned on the king. At the end of the night, Ember asked to see the maiden. The infamous device that had given Bedwyr all his power. The king, giddy with praise, proudly presented Ember with the empty contraption. Ember looked at the maiden, sighed with disappointment, and said, That does not look terrifying at all. I should have imagined the spikes to be much sharper. Bedwyr grew red at her comment and replied, The spikes are sharp enough. Look at the blood that still clings to them. But it is so small, said Ember. Are only children and women its victims? Bedwyr grew redder still and replied, Of course not, the maiden has devoured many men. Ember shook her head and said to the king, I do not believe it. Surely no warrior could fear this thing. A man like yourself, tall and muscled, would not fit within. The king laughed and saw a way to prove the merit of the maiden to Ember. I will show you how easily a man like myself could fit, he said, and with that he stepped into the device. But Ember was waiting, and no sooner had Bedwyr squeezed himself into the iron casket than Ember slammed it shut on him. Ember took the maiden with the screaming Bedwyr inside, through the castle and down into the city, and the people, finally free from the king's tyranny, cheer and dance to the singing that echoed through the streets until Bedwyr was dead and it finally stopped. A tale often told in the Singing Maiden Tavern. I want to go back to Val Royal real quick to make sure that there's nothing I can shop for right now, like mounts or something. And also, there was a merchant that apparently you're supposed to be able to well get for you. You have to, to fight. go serve the Inquisition or whatever. Um, I missed out on that. I, I, I think you're supposed to get her before you leave, after you talk to the uh, Seeker dude, whatever, and he like punches the old lady. Anyway, uh, I messed up, but there's a merchant lady there that you can have come to the, to the Inquisition. Open? Yes, as open as I can be. Uh, if you've a need for the well cut or the sparkling, perhaps I can help. At the very least, we can appear like everything is normal. Yes. No, I did not see him. The report was vague and he moved on quickly. Well, this has all been a frustrating mess. Templars and Chantry and especially the mages. Just everything. They are heroes, you know. I have relatives in Denerim. They saw. La pomme vi. I'm. I'm not even gonna attempt to say it. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> The apples nearest the cafe are said to change their taste depending on whether one is walking toward or away from the gallows. And of course they do, for taste is subject to the whims of the heart, and no meal is favored after tears. But dare it anyway, for none know the taste of joy such as we who do not shy from experience. 
From Our Orlesian Heart by formerly Sister Laudine. So, like a king? Family line, all that? Oh, it just sounds so common in your accent. I don't have an accent. Those who oppose thee shall know the wrath of heaven. Field and forest shall burn. You had granted them power over oh, the yes. very fade itself. Though they sang hymns of praise unending. Though they could do anything. They destroyed nothing. Created nothing. Loved. It seems. Oh, yes. What? Yes, I'm sorry. Minding the duties of the ailing mother, Havara. I am rather overwhelmed. Forgive me. I am unsure whether I meant to extend chantry services to you, and that troubles me greatly. Her Majesty's Convenience, a plaque reads, For Her Majesty's Convenience, wood and vines defy the very sun and rain. The Lover's Alcove. Every district has one, at least one, and the question must be, why is a place meant for dalliance declared in such an obvious way? And the answer, of course, is that obviousness is the entirety of the point. When manners and station will not allow impassioned words, such corners are places to be seen, not being seen. Entering with a paramour is as much a declaration as singing out in joy, which one of good standing must never do. The alcove is thus a dignified means of announcing romantic affiliation, either for genuine partnership or to appear as such in order to spare a suitor a refusal. Dignity, of course, requiring that one does not also make use of the darkness for actual physical gratification. This has, of course, never occurred. From Our Orlesian Heart by formerly Sister Laudine. Good day to you. The Summer Home of Messer Glubs. A plaque reads, A seasonal home for the childhood pet of the twin sons of Empress Yvette. The nature of Messer Glubs remains unknown, save that he was a gift from a Ravani ambassador, and he was eventually released to the sea after taking the hand of a sluggish page. Hello. I suppose. I'm not going to read all of these ones that are hanging out on this little center thing with a bunch of lions. They're all really short. You can pause it if you want to read them. They're not that interesting. What did they need? All's well, it seems. We shall see. But I will read the first line just because this one seems interesting and it's long. In respect to Emperor Alphonse Valmont, the Lions of Orlais, a repeating element dedicated to the great defenders otherwise noted, it is rumored that one is gold, one is bronze and weighted with poison, one is chocolate, <laughs> and one is watching. As the saying goes, dare we all a thief to test his back and learn which is most dangerous to try, deny, or lay. In truth, all are lead and leaf. Don't pretend to ride them too long, lest the mind give way. Exerted and torn from a disposable walking tour of the capital by Philia Mabard. Oh. 
O Creator, see me kneel, for I walk only where you would bid me. Stand. I trust all is well. I have some more questions. As you wish. You don't seem to like your homeland much. My family polluted it for me. What little I saw of my homeland was through the bars of a gilded cage. My uncle treated me like a porcelain doll to be placed on a shelf and dusted only when necessary. Thus I did not see Nevara. The real Nevara until much later. By then I realized I knew it not at all. I'll let you get back to work. Did you need something? Is there anything I should know? Radcliffe wasn't always a refuge for mages. Some of our recruits have family there. They fear for the place, as do I. Is there anything I should know? Not at present. What do you think of the people you work with? Who do you mean? What do you think of our ambassador? We have little in common. How she delights in meeting with nobles all day is beyond me. But I enjoy working with her. How do you like working with Leliana? The Inquisition would not exist without her. I may not always agree with her methods, but she's more passionate about our cause than anyone. Cassandra may have declared the Inquisition publicly, but Liliana is just as responsible for its formation. Are you satisfied with the Inquisition's forces? Our numbers are small, but they suit our needs for the time being. Some Templars have joined us instead of following the Order. They've proven invaluable in training new recruits. I should let you get back to work. Enchanter Vivienne lives well. She remains in the center circle and the... Thank you for all that you are doing to help. saying something about Colin? Hmm? I... Uh, yes. Haven has limited space for our soldiers to train. Perhaps we could set up something over here. It's time to leave. We're going somewhere besides the hinterlands. Scouting the storm coast. Let's go. Your Worship, for what it's worth, welcome to the Storm Coast. I would have sent word sooner, but our efforts have been... delayed. How so? There's a group of bandits operating in the area. They know the terrain, and our small party has had trouble going up against them. Some of our soldiers went to speak with their leader. Haven't heard back, though. I'll do what I can to find our people. Thank you, Your Worship. That's a relief. The soldiers didn't have an exact location for the bandits, but they were starting their search farther down the beach. With all this fuss, we haven't been able to conduct a proper search for the wardens either. Well, good luck, and enjoy the sea air. I hear it's good for the soul.
I've news, sir. What is it? See for yourself, sir. This might interest you, sir. What is it? You may want to look into this. Chargers! Stand down! Krim! How'd we do? Five or six wounded, Chief. No dead. That's what I like to hear. Let the throat cutters finish up, then break out the casks. Krim is a freaking cutie, am I right? Am I right? So, you're with the Inquisition, huh? Glad you can make it. Come on, have a seat. Drinks are coming. Iron Bull, I presume. Yeah, the horns usually give it away. I assume you remember Chromisius Aclasi, my lieutenant. Good to see you again. Rock cutters are done, Chief. Already? Have them check again. I don't want any of those Tevinter bastards getting away. No offense, Krem. <laughs> None taken. At least a bastard knows who his mother was. Puts him one up on you, Canari, right? So, you've seen us fight. We're expensive, but we're worth it. <laughs> and I'm sure the Inquisition can afford us. The Chargers seem like an excellent company. They are. But you're not just getting the boys. You're getting me. You need a frontline bodyguard. I'm your man. Whatever it is. Demons? Dragons? The bigger the better. And there's one other thing. Might be useful. Might piss you off. Ever hear of the Ben Hasra? They're a Kunari organization, right? The equivalent of their guards in City Watch. I'd go closer to spies. But yeah, that's them. Or, well... Us. The Ben Hasrath are concerned about the breach. Magic out of control like that could cause trouble everywhere. I've been ordered to join the Inquisition, get close to the people in charge, and send reports on what's happening. But I also get reports from Ben Hasrath agents all over Olay. You sign me on, I'll share them with your people. All right, you're in. 
Excellent. Prem, tell the men to finish drinking on the road. The Chargers just got hired. What about the casks, Chief? We just opened them up with axes. Find some way to seal them. You're Tervinta, right? Try blood magic. We'll meet you back at Haven. Those must be the bandits Harding mentioned.
What discipline achieves? We came first from the sea. The dreadnoughts took Parvel in at a stroke. We marched on the land called Saharan, then Ravain and the Tevinter Imperium. Our Vidithari told us the Tevinter capital of Minrathis was unassailable. Though it did not fall, its walls were cracked with steel and and bacune fire. I'm sorry, I don't know what that bacune bacune fire. Tevinter saw what discipline achieves. The boss called us conquerors when we brought them purpose. When Tamasrins teach a child to read, or a wilderness is made fruitful, is that conquest? Without the certainty of the Kuhn, there can be no reason. The boss raised three retaliations against our forces, pushing back in Antiva and Ravain. The Kebithari, still adapting to the Kuhn's rule, suffered worst. The very people the boss sought to liberate, the land burned, while the boss called us savages. Such madness and hypocrisy needed another answer. We signed the treaties of the boss to silence them and left. We will return. Patience is the manifestation of self-control. While the boss bicker amongst themselves, we prepare. What is time compared to the demands of the Kuhn? Tomasrin teaching notes recovered and translated. The Kuhn. Long ago, the Ashkari lived in a great city by the sea. Wealth and prosperity shone upon the city like sunlight, and still its people grumbled in discontent. The Ashkari walked the streets of his home and saw that all around him were the signs of genius, triumphs of architecture, artistic masterpieces, the palaces of wealthy merchants, libraries, and concert halls. But he also saw signs of misery, the poor, sick, lost, frightened, and the hopeless. And the Ashkari asked himself, how can one people be both wise and ignorant, great and ruined, triumphant and despairing? So the Ashkari left the land of his birth seeking out other cities and nations, looking for a people who had found wisdom enough to end hopelessness and despair. He wandered for many years through empires filled with palaces and gardens, but in every nation of the wise, the great and the mighty, he found the forgotten, the abandoned and the poor. Finally, he came to a vast desert, a wasteland of bare rock clawing at the empty sky where he took shelter in the shadow of a towering rock, and resolved to meditate until he found his answer or perished. Many days had passed until one night he gazed out from the shadow of the rocks, he saw the lifeless desert awaken, a hundred thousand locusts hatched from the barren ground, and as one, they turned south, a single wave of moving earth. The Ashkari rose and followed in their wake, a path of devastation miles wide, the once verdant land turned to waste, and the Ashkari's eyes were opened. Existence is a choice. There is no chaos in the world, only complexity. Knowledge of the complex is wisdom. From wisdom of the world comes wisdom of the self. Mastery of the self is mastery of the world. Loss of the self is the source of suffering. Suffering is a choice, and we can refuse it. It is in our own power to create the world or destroy it. And the Ashkari went forth to his people. An excerpt from the Kuhn, Canto 1.
You know, the Bin Hasrath are a lot like your Seekers, Cassandra. I highly doubt that. Maintaining justice in the ranks, operating under a veil of secrecy, investigating corruption and threats to the Order, and we deal with it all so quietly. Most people never notice. Interesting. Though we do not break the minds of our prisoners. We'll keep at it. You guys will get there.
Okay, that's badass. Let's try not to get eaten, shall we? Definitely not high enough level to kill a dragon yet. I just wanted to kind of hang out here and enjoy it and watch the fight. I don't think I'm even ready to kill a giant yet. I mean, I probably could do it, but I like to play things casually, so you guys, you guys know how it is. I'm going to avoid it. I still can't save the game because it thinks I'm in combat. I'm trying to end the episode. <laughs> All right, I'll find a spot at some point. Hope you guys are enjoying the video. Um, I hope you're still okay with me reading the codex entries because I think it's kind of fun and relaxing to watch. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next part. Bye-bye.